the prime minister of uh, Hungary, uh, Victor o uh, Obron, Obron. Yeah. Uh, he has said that NATO need, now needs to start pushing for peace. Uh, many of the top nations have balked at his comments. Do you think it's because these NATO leaders believe um, that going for peace would be seen as weakness or worse as a loss? Or what? It, what is the reason to, to keep pushing at this point? I think the leadership in Paris, Berlin, and London, as examples, uh, is at least as remote from reality as the Biden administration is. The, these are, you know, this is your globalist elite, the people that believe in a world that doesn't exist. They think they're fighting uh, Russia because Russia is a nationalist state. They have a national identity, a national language, a national culture. Ergo, we have to destroy it. Remember, these are the people that have been inviting millions from the Middle East and Africa into Europe. Uh, they, have, they have been welcoming every single potential danger to their society as a, a returning faith, as something good. In other words, they want to do to Russia what they've already done to Europe, which is severely weaken the place. Look at the economic policies. Catastrophic. You know, the Germans just shut down their last nuclear power plant. Well, no matter how much you may not like nuclear power, before you shut all of your plants down, you should have some alternative that works. No, they're shutting everything down and the alternatives don't work. I mean, if you think you're going to you know, survive on wind turbines, you've lost your mind. And the lifeblood of all civilizations and successful scientific industrial development is cheap energy. You got to have it. So they they've essentially robbed themselves of dec decades of positive growth and impoverished themselves. This is the elite that thinks it's right and refuses under any circumstances to accept anything else. So they look at what's happening and they say, well, the Russians still haven't moved much further now than they were a few months ago. In other words, the Russians control about 23, 24 percent of Ukrainian territory. The Russians have never cared about the territory. They're care they care about destroying Ukrainian forces and killing them. They want to de demilitarize and, quote unquote, denazify Ukraine. Well, if the Ukrainians are coming to them repeatedly in vast numbers and allowing themselves to be killed, you don't move very much. When that ends, they'll move. Maybe then these people in Western Europe will wake up. But, you know, I kind of doubt it. I think they're going to have to be thrown out of office. And if the Europeans don't throw them out, it could be the death of Europe. These people are a catastrophe. They're a disaster. Britain is in just as much, if not more, serious trouble. So <clears throat> to answer your question, you know, you're, it's an ideological problem. In other words, if you think that you're going to extend with force of arms the LGBTQ, RSW, whatever agenda to Russia that refuses to absorb and adopt your quote-unquote new values, instead says, no, we're an Orthodox Christian country. We think there are two genders, men and women. And oh, by the way, we don't marry women to women and men to men. Oh, well, obviously they're committing a terrible sin. They deserve to be destroyed. Uh, this is a hopeless endeavor. That's not going to end. In fact, I think the tide of, of opinion and attitude is actually swinging in, in Russia's favor in Europe. As more and more people look at the, I don't want to say catastrophic, but certainly fragile quality of their civilization and culture, Russia is pointing to it in a different direction and is going to gain, I think, a, a lot of momentum as a result. I think ultimately the globalists and their neocon friends, who seem to have all sorts of other personal reasons for hating Russia, are, are on the losing side. But again, they have to, it has to be demonstrated clearly, unambiguously for them to admit anything. And even then, they'll probably crawl back under their rocks and wait for the next opportunity. I mean, I grew up during the Vietnam War. And when that thing ended, I could not conceive of any future for the United States in which we repeated the utter fallacy and, uh, folly and stupidity of Vietnam. Now, I'm sorry, but there was no vital strategic interest for the United States in Southeast Asia. In fact, a smart strategist would have stood back and said, well, you know, if the Chinese decide to invade the place, that could be good. They'll overreach. 
you know, this is what people don't understand. If you go back through history and you look at all the sort of, sort of great men of history, whether they're bad or good, doesn't matter. Inevitably, the problem you have is that everybody overreaches. The French overreached, the Spaniards overreached, the British ultimately overreached. We are overreaching. Everyone overreaches. Remember, Einstein said uh, he defined genius as knowing when to stop. Einstein was right. These people don't get it. They don't know when to stop. So it's going to come back to haunt them. Uh, it's just a matter of time. And I think the economics at home, and I'm sure you've had other people on, but people really need to listen to this James Ricards. Uh, he He's absolutely spot on. He's not the only one. There are other sober-minded people out there. The only difference I have with the, the cash and gold crowd is that I think Bitcoin and digital currency is going to eventually move in and become an enormously important store of value. I don't think it's a temporary phenomenon at all. I think it's a very attractive future for those of us who believe in freedom because 